Welcome to the Mesa Chamber of Commerce Inside Business Podcast. My name is Sally Harrison, and I'm the CEO of the Mesa Chamber of Commerce. Today, we are in the University of Phoenix podcast studio with our guest, Dwayne Rowan of ASU. Hi, Hi. Sally. Hi, I'm so glad you're here. I'm glad to be here. We've been waiting for this day, Dwayne. I have been, too. (laughs) Well, today we're going to talk about the ASU Polytechnic Campus. So, I have some questions for you. Let's get started. Okay. Tell us what the ASU Poly campus is like. It is absolutely a lovely campus. I uh, have fallen in love with the place uh, for all sorts of reasons. How long have you been there? I've been at the Polytechnic campus since 2004. Uh I've got programs on other campuses as well, but uh, I'm primarily responsible for coordinating things at Poly. I'm uh, dean of one of ASU's, dean of ASU's um, College of Integrative Sciences and Arts, but I'm also the vice provost of the Polytechnic campus. Um, and, uh, you know, what I love about it, um, the architecture is so beautiful. The desert it's a nice lands- campus. It is. The desert landscaping is so beautiful. If you turn the clock back 15 years, it wasn't quite so beautiful. And then the sense of community on the campus is phenomenal. How many students are out there right now? We have a little over 5,000 students on campus, plus another couple thousand students who are taking online degree programs that grow out of the Polytechnic campus. That's a big campus. We're getting there. Yeah. Uh, but it's the second smallest ASU campus. In the so world. you said you started there in 2004. Is that when the campus opened? The campus opened in 1996 before that. but when I, I had got, no idea. But when I got there in 2004, uh, it was uh, really small and uh, had... I did not look the way it looks today. <laughs> I really encourage people to get out there today to see what it's like. It's, it's very it's nice. It's amazing. Well, tell us what guides the work of the faculty and staff at that campus. You know, the what guides the, our work at Polytechnic Campus is what guides the work at all the ASU uh, campuses, and that's the ASU Charter. And the ASU Charter is only, it's fewer than 90 words long. What it says is don't evaluate us based on whom we exclude, but judge us by whom we include and how well they do. And then also evaluate us based on how well we serve the community through our teaching, our service, and our research. And we take, we are so proud of that charter. And I talk about it every day of the week. uh, And I think about it many times every day of the week. Uh, And it's really important uh, because when you think about, look at the Bureau of Labor Statistics, for example, and look at post-secondary attainment, uh, based on um, uh, level of education. Mm-hmm. And you just look at those data, uh, that table, very briefly, and you understand why it's so important. You have really impressive uh, figures about your campuses everywhere you look. Mm-hmm. ASU is at the top. Mm-hmm. It's pretty impressive. Thank you. How does ASU, particularly the Polytechnic campus, make a difference in our community? Well, uh, we make uh, a difference in in all sorts of ways. One, we think that uh, we contribute to economic development uh, in all sorts of ways, you know, by producing well-educated students who, when they enter the workforce, are Mm going to contribute. Uh, We, uh, Mary Lou Fulton Teachers College, for example, which has a presence at the Polytechnic campus, has uh, 273 of their students who are actively engaged in working in the Mesa Public Schools right now as wow. student teachers or interns or, or other things. That's great. Um, uh, we also uh, are involved in um, all sorts of things. For example, uh, I have been involved in uh, the uh, Mesa Chamber of Commerce Education Committee yes, you for, have. for a few years as now. As a chair, thank you very much. <laughs> My pleasure, it's a joy. Uh, and then also some of us at the Polytechnic campus, and, and all, to be fair, other ASU campuses are involved in the Southwest Mesa uh, Economic Resource Forum, better mm-hmm. known as SMURF. Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a really good event, actually, mm. once a month out at Gateway Airport. It is. It's so much fun going to those SMURF meetings every mm-hmm. month because we get, I get to hear about all the economic development in, yeah. the, in the area n- near the Polytechnic campus. It's just phenomenal uh, it's what's going on It's a lot of activity there. out there. It is. It, it, yeah. I get excited every time I go to one well, of those meetings. Well, so you, you brought up SMURF. Um, we, uh, from the Economic Development Advisory Board from the city, uh, which I sit on, we did a very brief bus tour in that area, and now the Chamber's going to be holding a bus tour, and we'll be including ASU, mm-hmm. um, the Poly Campus, on uh, October 30th. 
Great. So that'll be fun to kind of get to show off that campus a little C bit during terrific. that tour. Yes, and as I understand, I'll be involved. Yes, you so. will. I heard you would. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us what kinds of academic programs are available at the Poly campus. So one of the things I like to do is to tell people um, all of what's going on academically at Poly. Sometimes people think it's the campus that existed a decade or two mm -hmm. ago. Uh, right now we've got five colleges offering programs at the Polytechnic campus, uh, engineering, my college, Integrative Sciences and Arts. What uh, did you just say? What was that second one? The name of my college is the college. Oh, your college. <laughs> my college is the, is the College of Integrative Sciences and Arts. Uh, Mary, uh, Mary Lou Fulton Teachers College, the W.P. Carey uh, School of Business, mm -hmm. and School of Sustainability, uh, plus Barrett the Honors College. And among those uh, five colleges offering degree programs at Poly, we have roughly 100 undergraduate and graduate degree programs wow. there. Uh, so there's a lot happening uh, academically. Uh, we're probably going to meet the needs of, of just about everybody. Well, that's good, because... Uh, According to all of our businesses, we have a lot of needs here, we do. a lot of workforce needs. Yeah, and and a lot of a lot of the programs there contribute directly to workforce development mm -hmm. in the East Valley, uh, especially in engineering and in right. and in business and uh, agribusiness in particular, but also in in the sciences and in education and so sustainability. You said agribusiness. It, if somebody wanted to come out and just take a tour, do you have tours available? For we have tours all the time. We will. We will personalize tours. Uh, we've done that for some people uh, who are in the involved in city government in Mesa, uh, for example. But we're we're happy to do that otherwise. But we have all sorts of scheduled tours going on. I think that'd be fun the, for people. The year, but yeah. if uh, if there are a group of uh, leaders from uh, Mesa in particular wanted to come out, we'd be happy to tailor the tour we might have to, to, to your put interest. That together. What kinds of research do faculty conduct at the Polytechnic campus? A wide range of research, and I'm going to list just a few of them that uh, uh, come to mind. Uh, the the algae research, uh, looking at algae as a source of fuel and food, uh, microgrid research, um, civil war research, engineering and mining, wearable robotics, manufacturing, advanced manufacturing, ocean ecology, wildlife biology, mitigation of food waste, food deserts, food insecurity, landscape, horticulture, and dozens of others. So how does the Civil War research fit into all those other things? Because you just talked about a lot of things that are very cutting edge, and then you've got Civil War worked in. Well, you have to, you have to remember that uh, research by nature, regardless of what field it is in, should be cutting edge. So we've got a faculty mem member named Brooke Simpson, who mm -hmm. teaches history at the Polytechnic campus, who does research on the Civil War and on the American presidency, which is very relevant all the time. Right. Uh, and uh, so uh, people who are doing research in the humanities, for example, are providing new insights into things like got what it. happened at that point in history. Interesting. Tell us what kinds of extracurricular activities do students get involved in at Poly? A lot of activities, and we're so proud of our students. Uh, for example, our Desert Wave underwater robotics team, which is all women, for example, mm -hmm. uh, recently competed. They finished third in the world uh, oh my gosh. behind Russia and China, which means that they were first in the United States. A couple years ago, we had the AZ Hyperloop team, which uh, uh, competed in the SpaceX competition, right? Um, and uh, they finished in the top uh, eight in the world of wow. uh, more than a 1,000 teams who competed. Um, a Superstition Review, which is a literary magazine that we run out of the Polytechnic campus, and students who work on Superstition Review get to work with some of the best-known writers in not only the United States but the world. It's phenomenal. Um, we've got students competing in national wildlife competitions, We've got a robotics club. We've got over 100 clubs uh, at ASU. That's pretty cool. Sounds like you've got a little bit of something for everybody. We do. Tell us what's new at Poly. Well, we have new degree programs at Poly, uh, some recent degrees, for example, in psychology and counseling. And there's a big need for people who are interested yeah. in mental health, as mm -hmm. you know from our work on the Chamber Education Committee. Um, and those great degrees are growing rapidly. We've got a new degree in user experience, for example, about the interaction between human and humans and technology. Uh, we've got a new residence hall uh, that's under construction right now. Um, and uh, we um, uh, also uh, uh, have the, this fall, we had the Travis Mannion 
9-11 Heroes Run on the campus, which is new for us, although mm -hmm. it's not new to the Valley. Mm -hmm. And we were so proud that the, the Travis Mannion 9-11 Heroes Run had the biggest participation ever. Nice. Uh, so we were thrilled about that. I, I saw some things posted on social media about that. It looked like a great event. It was. Well, tell us about your future plans for the campus. Well, uh, we have been planning for some time now for an innovation zone on 300 acres on the south side of campus mm -hmm. currently where there's old housing left over from World War II. <laughs> uh, and uh, so, uh, and what we're looking there is to have uh, businesses, uh, research facilities uh, that, that are interested in the kinds of work that we're doing, uh, you know, in advanced manufacturing, for example, uh, in uh, robotics, those kinds of things. But, you know, we're interested in working with a, a very wide range of business and industry mm -hmm. who might want to co-locate with us sure. to take advantage of the resources that the campus has to offer. It's pretty exciting stuff. It is. Do you have anything else you want to share today? Um, I think we could probably go on for hours talking <laughs> about everything that's happening uh, out there. I, I would love to. Uh, well, you can come back. I can come back. <laughs> yeah. uh, I can come back. Yeah. Y anything else? Well, Any just parting? a couple more things. You sure. know, the last Friday of the semester, uh, which is right around December 1st, uh, Friday afternoon, 3 o'clock, 3.30, uh, we've got, uh, and we do this every semester, uh, Innovation Showcase. We're I've been to it. Isn't it great? It's very fun. Yeah, yeah. Where, where hundreds of students show off their engineering projects that they've done, oftentimes in collaboration with local businesses mm -hmm. uh, who, who uh, commission them to do that research. I would say they have every right to show off some of those things. They're, they're very impressive. Phenomenal. Yeah. And, and those engineering projects cut across just about every segment of the economy, including agriculture. Very cool. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, well, uh, we, uh, you, you know, coming up in, in February, we're a few months off from February, but we've got Open oh, Door at the Pol <laughs> Open Door at the Polytechnic campus, and we'll have Open Door at the other campuses where on a Saturday um, the campus is open for uh, the afternoon, mm -hmm. and we get a couple thousand people wow. uh, who show up for that. Uh, mm -hmm. We especially love to have younger kids show up for that so sure. that they can see what it's like being on a university campus. That's cool. Well, Dwayne, thanks for joining us today on the Inside Business Podcast. You can find all of our episodes on the Inside Business Podcast at iTunes, Google Play, or your own favorite podcast website. You can also find them online at mesachandler.org. Thank you, Sally. Thank you.